fortunebuilders.tv. Hello everyone, JD Asajan and welcome to another episode of fortunebuilders.tv where we bring the uh, real estate and business education to you. Remember, fortunebuilders.tv is for you, the viewer. That means go to the Suggest a Show segment and uh, give us some input on what you want to learn more about. Today actually, today's show is actually a suggestion again from one of our viewers. Uh, Shannon F. from uh, off of Facebook actually responded to a post and um, so here it is. Uh, they wanted to, actually two people, uh, Shannon F. and uh, one other person responded uh, Home Ventures, actually, I'm looking at the sheet right now, and they wanted to learn more about assigning contracts, specifically relating to assigning REO deals. So you know what? We're going to talk about it today. We're going to break it down, and we're going to uh, get to the meat of, um, of that topic. And I'm going to be pretty blunt with everyone because I get asked this particular question a lot about assigning REOs. And so I'm going to cut to the chase what's working and what's not working and talk about how you can uh, look at it in your own market. Understand that um, banks... Um, banks are not stupid, okay? They've made some mistakes in the past and make mistakes just like everyone does, but banks are dumb. They're not going to let you, they're going to do their very best not to let you as an investor tie up one of their assets, uh, do what you want with it, and then completely assign the paper and make money in between, which is what you're basically trying to do when you're assigning a contract. And so because of that, they're not going to, they're going to do everything they can to not let that happen, which means signing their own contracts on top of whatever standard contract you use in your state and their contract is going to be non-assignable most times. So how do we as an investor navigate through that, right? Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to take an asset, a bank owned REO, put it under contract and then assign that contract to an investor, a cash buyer, let's say, all right? Um, so you want to try to do that with little risk or little money out of pocket. So really there's a couple of different ways that uh, investors have tried to do this and continue to try to do it. Let's talk first about uh, land trusts, okay, because one of the answers to that is land trusts and, and people have used them to, uh, to do that, to basically put a property into a land trust and then assign that deal. Now, there's a reason we don't use land trusts anymore in our company at CT Homes and Fortune Builders for doing deals because land trusts weren't created for that purpose. They were not created for putting a property in and then assigning that deal. Now, there are a lot of investors that still use them and you'll hear different schools of thought on this, but the bottom line is they weren't created for that purpose. And anytime you use something that wasn't created, um, use something in a way that it wasn't created for, you have potential problem. Now you can use it from time to time over and over again and potentially never have a problem. And all it takes is one person who finds out uh, how you used it and didn't like that and, and you can create a world of mess for yourself. Big legal problems. So, while you can use land trust, we don't do it anymore. We don't recommend it because it's not what a land trust was created for. And uh, most of the time, a bank isn't going to allow you to use one anyways. So, uh, because on the back end too, when you have a land trust, a property in a land trust, you try to sell it, um, whether you're an investor buyer or a retail buyer, it's just going to create a lot of problems because it's not what it was intended for. All right, so that's check one off um, in terms of land trust. So let's talk about how can you effectively assign deals. You know. Should you buy them in your personal name? Should you buy them in your company name? Well, there's a couple of things that you should use as an investor and can use as an investor. One of the things that's very um, easy to use is what's called transactional funding. Transactional funding is short-term cash funding for you as an investor that allows you to quick turn a deal. For example, you put a property under contract, you actually uh, have a buyer ready to buy that deal from you and you need money in between to sandwich the deal together. So you actually physically close on the property from the bank with transactional funding and then the next day or within 48 hours you resell that deal uh, to the in buyer, right? So you have kind of two escrows going on at one time with the bank to buy it and with your cash buyer to sell it and the funding is in between to be able to get that deal done. Now, transactional funding obviously costs money to us as investors, but you have it for, for just a short period of time, so it's actually not that expensive. And when you factor that into the deal, it's a way for you as an investor to take advantage of what the market, what's available to us for funding and get a deal done, all right? So that's a great way to get contracts um, get deals sold. Now that's not technically assigning a contract because you're physically closing on it so you're going to have closing costs and then you're reselling it so you're going to have closing costs on that side too. But as long as you factor that into the deal and your profitability you're going to be fine. So then how do you truly assign an REO deal? Well the, the truth of the matter is it's, it's very difficult 
And uh, to do it right, it's, um, the banks are not gonna, really going to do everything they can to try to prevent it. One way would be to, if you have the ability to, and you know you're in buyer, um, which you should really do before you put a property under contract, and speculate on who you're going to sell it to, you can try to put both names on the contract. For example, your LLC name and the uh, in buyer's LLC name. And then when you buy the property, you can uh, quit claim your interest into the other owner's um, LLC, basically. So they will have sole ownership of the property. Now, you should check in your individual states on the um, process for quit claiming properties and making sure that you can do that and uh, basically push full interest over to uh, that other uh, end user, that end buyer. And then in for consideration of that quick claim, they can pay you an assignment fee, right? But in that particular instance, all parties have to have full disclosure in that your end buyer is gonna know what you bought it for and you have to have an agreement with them that they're gonna pay you um, a fee for that quick claim and you should have on top of whatever purchase contract you have, you should have a separate agreement that's drafted truthfully by an attorney that stipulates all the terms of your relationship with that end buyer and what is gonna be done for them to uh, to pay you that assignment, that wholesale fee. All right, so that's a little bit more complicated can be a little bit more complicated of a transaction, but it's a way to get an, um, an assignment done if you're not going to physically do the project. So those are, those are some ways that we are assigning um, bank-owned deals and or reselling bank-owned deals. Uh, we have a deal available right now in our San Diego market for wholesale that we actually physically closed on from the bank, and we're going to be offering it as, um, as an investment opportunity. So good wholesaling, and, and I should say specifically because we're talking about it here, good assignment of contract or quick turning deals for you as an investor is knowing who your buyer is going to be on the back end. If you buy a deal and then scramble to try to find a cash buyer for it, then you're going about things the wrong way. The best way to get these deals done quickly is to go out and find your buyer first and then go put deals under contract that meet their criteria. And then you can fi figure out your, your ways of getting that deal to them. And then transactional funding is very, a very easy process at that point. Um, but I would very highly discourage you against using land trusts because they're more complicated. And to that point, anytime you do things that are more complicated in real estate, you create more potential risk. And I know from experience because we used to do it in the past when the market you know, was booming and you could do different things quickly and um, yeah, they created a little bit more work, but banks were so willing to get things done that it was, it was easier back then. Now, you know, banks are very stringent on what they'll uh, let us do as investors. So my suggestion to you is to do what I said, transactional funding and or figure out a way to get your in buyer on the contract with you. Bottom line, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're going to be able to use land trust and it's going to be easy for you because it's not. Okay, that's just the bottom line and what's happening out in the market. Fair enough. I want to be clear to the point on these shows and really give you guys information that you can take out and use. Because if I sit here and, and you know, fluff your feathers and not give you real information, then there's no point in watching these. So I want to be real clear and real to real really to the point. Um, that was a lot of information in a short time, so I want to make sure that you take advantage of and watch this show again, as well as um, download the information that's available on these shows. If you didn't notice that on the episodes, below the episode that you're watching, there's a, there's a download for you to take and um, get some more information about the topic that we're talking about. All right, good stuff? All right, now what I want to do is get into our deal or no deal segment. Deal or no deal? Basically, pretty quickly, um, deal or no deal on land trust, because that's what we've been talking about, assigning deals and uh, how do you assign REOs and can you use land trusts to assign REOs? The answer is yes. The answer is if it makes it a deal or no deal, in our opinion, as a, an experienced investment company, an experienced teacher of real estate investing, land trust is really a no deal. And there are other ways better ways to get deals moved to your in buyer that don't create more risk for you as an investor and more challenges uh, for you as an investment company. So that's, that's our suggestion. And uh, take it and use it. No deal. So what I want to get into next is, of course, our quote of the week. Quote of the week. It's a good quote. It comes from uh, an actor that some of you, hopefully all of you have heard of, James Dean. Uh, truth be told, actually, funny story, um, he's he, he is who I um, am named after. J.D., 
the initials of my name, actually they're not initials, it's my full name, came from my father because he was a huge James Dean fan. And um, I'm sure a lot of you didn't know that, but I get asked all the time, what does JD stand for? Well, it doesn't stand for James Dean, but the thought and the idea came from my father actually and being a big James Dean fan. And the truth is he had a lot of very uh, inspiring things to, to talk about. The way he lived his life was um, pretty, uh, pretty spectacular. He went out, um, in a, in a pretty spectacular way, unfortunately, but he had some good quotes and one he, he wrote here that I think is a good thing to leave everyone with. He says, dream as if you'll live forever, live as if you'll die today. Think about that for a moment and what that means. You know, this window that we have here on, on earth is pretty short. So my suggestion and, and James Dean's quote points right to that is, you know, set your goals high. Reach for the stars, man, and just live every day like it's, like it's going to be your last because it, it, it really it could be, right? And real estate is one of those businesses that you can accomplish a lot in a short amount of time. You can make a tremendous amount of money doing things the right way. Um, you can help a lot of people in the process, but, you know, set the bar high. Set your goals high. Work towards them. Live every day like it's going to be your last. And at the end of uh, your run, you'll be able to look back on a body of work and a, and a lifestyle that you can be proud of. So I want to thank everyone for uh, watching this episode. Share it with your friends if you got a lot out of it. Uh, Facebook, um, on social media for you, the, the links for this show are actually right below us here, so you can use that as well. And get on the website, suggest a show, let us know what you want to learn more about, and uh, we'll, we'll listen, and we'll start talking about designing shows about it. FortuneBuilders.tv is for you, the investor. Glad you uh, are watching, and hope to see you soon.